Hey and welcome. Today we're going to take a look at how we can build modern web apps 100% in Java. So we're going to use the Vaadin web framework along with Spring Boot and we're going to spend today just building an app from scratch just so I can show you some of the core concepts and give you an idea of how simple it can be to build a web app. So we're going to start off on Spring Initializer and we're just going to go with the defaults here, except I'm going to choose Java 17. And then we're going to add a few dependencies here. So first of all, we are going to build a full stack application, meaning we want to have some way of persisting data. I'm going to use Spring Data JPA. I'm going to use an H2 database. And then I mentioned we're going to use Vaadin as the web framework. And then we're going to use the Spring Boot dev tools to help us develop more quicker. Let's hit generate and check out the project that we've downloaded. We are going to open it up in IntelliJ, in my case. And if we take a look at what the project has in it, it doesn't have a whole lot. It has this Spring Boot application launcher, so just the main method, kicking, kickstarting the Spring Boot application and nothing else. In the POM file, you can see we have dependencies that we uh, defined, including the Vaadin framework here. So in order to get started, I'm going to just walk you through some of the basic concepts of Vaadin. So let's create a new main view here that we can use for going through some of those. So like I mentioned, Vaadin allows you to build web apps fully in Java. So we're not going to write any HTML or JavaScript, even though that's essentially what's going to run in the browser at the end. So let's take a look at how we do that. Uh, so I'm going to first of all tell Vaadin that this uh, view should be mapped to the empty route, so the just the context route. And we're going to extend from a Vaadin layout class, vertical layout, meaning that any components we put in here will get stacked vertically on top of each other. All right, so we'll create a constructor here. In here, we're going to add a header one component, just saying the classic hello world. And with this, we now have a very bare bones Vaadin application. Can go ahead and run it here uh, by running the Spring Boot application. And let's give that a couple moments to get started. All right, so with the app running, let's go to localhost on port 8080, and we can see our hello world here. So let's take a look at, first of all, some of the just basic concepts of working with Vaadin. So in Vaadin, everything is a component. So if we wanted a button, we would initialize a new button component like this, we can give it a caption, click me, like that. Uh, equally, we could do a text field, for instance. So let's create a text field and initialize that to a new text field like this. And once we have components, we can display them by putting them into layouts. So in our case, we can call add, and then we can pass in the text field and the button like this. All right. And then we're going to build a project. So Spring Boot DevTools notices the change. And if all goes well, we'll see that we have a text field and a button here. You can see that they're on top of each other right now because we are in a vertical layout. If we wanted to have them next to each other, we could put them in a horizontal layout like this. And again, build this, and they will now get shown next to each other. Okay, so that takes care of creating and showing components. The last kind of key piece of information that we need to build an application is how do we add uh, interaction? We can do that by listening to events. So in our case, we can take the button and add a click listener on it. So whenever somebody clicks on this button, we could go ahead and say, let's add a new component. So we'll add a new paragraph, just a plain paragraph tag. And in there, we're gonna say, hello, and then we're going to get the value from the text field by calling get value on the text field. And then we can clear the text field by calling clear on it like this. So let's go ahead and build. And if all works out, we should be able to now go in here. I can type in my name, click on this, and we can see the greeting here. And just to kind of show you that we are actually building a modern web application, this isn't like a Java applet in disguise or anything like that. 
Let's take a look at what actually gets generated here, here in the uh, source. So you can see that the components here map pretty much one to one to what you see here. So Vaughn vertical layout matches the vertical layout here. The horizontal layout has a Vaughn text field and a Vaughn button. So all the components in the Vaughn UI library are just plain uh, web components, meaning that they're essentially custom HTML tags that we've defined. So they run in any modern browser without the need of any plugins or anything else. So as far as the browser is concerned, this is just a normal web application. We just happen to define the UI in Java. All right, so now that we know the basics, let's go ahead and build a simple address book type of application where we have a form on top, we persist people into the database, and then we show them in a data grid. So for that, we're gonna first of all create a entity that we can use to persist. So I'm gonna call this a person. A person, like I said, will be an entity and an entity needs an ID and we're gonna use a uh, generated value like this and this will be a private long ID. Then we will have a private string for first name, private string for last name, and a pri private string for email. Surprisingly hard to type and talk at the same time. All right, so we're gonna generate getters and setters for these. And that takes care of our basically a data model. Then we'll create a repository so that we can persist and fetch uh, these from the database. And this we can call person repository. And here I'm using Spring Data as the repository. So we can extend from the JPA repository. The type we have is a person and the key, uh, the ID key is of type long. All right. So now that we have a data model and the repository, what we can do is we can make that repository available to us in the UI by injecting it here. So just using Spring Auto Wiring in our UI. And we can call this our repository. We can save this into a field so that we have access to it throughout the view. And then let's start building out this uh, UI. So like I said, I want on the top a form for entering the first name, last name, and email. And then on, on the bottom, we want a data grid that shows those. So we can actually start by, let's define all those uh, UI components. So private text field for first name, be a new text field with a caption first name like that. And then we'll do the same for last name. For email, we could use a text field, but there is a even more specific email field that we can use. Uh, email field like this. And that just kind of validates that we're actually inputting an email. All right, so we have those. And then we're gonna use a Vaughn concept of a binder. A binder lets us connect a UI component, a UI input field with a data model field. So we're gonna create a binder. Let's type person, and we'll just call this binder and initialize this to a new, oh, not hibernate binder, but a bottom binder there. And this will take in a person class here. All right, so now we have all the kind of ingredients that we need for this. The other thing that we wanted was a grid for displaying things. So we can also go ahead and initialize a new data grid object of, again, of type person, call this grid and initialize this to a new grid like this and also pass in the person class. All right, so now we actually have all the all the ingredients that we need to build this UI. So let's go ahead and add the components here. So we're gonna, first of all, add the form and I'm gonna split that out into a separate method just to keep things clear here. And let's create the method there. And the second thing that we're gonna add is this grid. All right. And this should of course not return a string, but a component 
because otherwise that's not going to be something that we can add. All right, so for the form, essentially what I want to do is have all those fields next to each other. So we're going to create a layout, which is a new horizontal layout. And for the layout, we're going to set the alignment to baseline. So everything's nice and aligned. And we're going to call layout.add. And we're going to add in all of these. So we're going to add in first name, last name, email. And then finally, we're going to return the layout. All right, so let's go ahead and build, just make sure that we're on the right track here. So what we should see is that form up on top, and then we should see a grid below. All right, so good start. Uh, we can see the form up here, and we can see the grid down below. So one thing that, I, or a couple of things I want to do. First of all, let's rearrange the, the grid columns here and drop the ID from being visible. And then let's add a button here for actually adding adding people. So for the grid, uh, let's call grid.setColumns and then just define that we want to see the columns. First name, last name, and email like this. Then in the form, let's create a new component. So let's create a, a add button. This will be a new button and we'll say add. I want to make the button stand out a little bit. So I'm going to use a theme variant on it. I'm going to use the button variant of primary. It'll make it help, help it stand out a little bit. And then we can add it here. All right. So again, let's go ahead and build this, make sure that we're making some progress. So what you should see again is the button here. And now that the columns match here. All right. So we created this binder a while back. And what we want to do then is actually bind the UI fields to those uh, fields in our model. And if you remember the person object that we created, there was a reason why I named these fields and these fields exactly the same. That helps us use a pretty cool feature of the binder, which allows us to say bind instance fields on this, which will essentially inspect this layout for fields that match fields on this model, and it will automatically bind those together. So that takes care of that. Now, of course, we need to somehow react to this add button getting clicked so that we can we can do something about it. So for that, if you remember, we can add a click listener. And when somebody clicks, what we want to do is we want to tell the binder to write its contents into a new bean, and then we can use the repository to save that. So let's do a little try catch here. Uh, so we'll do a try and a catch for a validation exception like that. It won't do anything about it, but what we want to do is we'll create a new person, person, then we'll try to call binder dot write bean this person. And then assuming that went well, we're going to call uh, the repository to save it, that person. And then finally, we need something that actually updates the grid. And that's something I want to actually call here as we initialize the view as well. So we're going to extract that into a method of its own. Let's call fresh grid like this. I'm going to create the method. And this one will be very, very straightforward. All that we need to do is call grid, set items, tell the grid to get its items from calling the repository to find all. So just find everything in the database and show it in the grid like this. And of course, now if we use this right now, it would work as long as we're uh, using the app. But if we came into an app that already had some content, it wouldn't get shown. So we want to make sure here in the in the constructor that we call this uh, refresh grid once on init. All right, so let's build and see what happens. If everything went well, we should now be able to use this. So we should be able to, or I should be able to type in my name at vaudin.com and click on add, and it shows up here. All right, very cool. Um, one thing I could have done here to improve the UX a little bit 
is to once everything is, is done here, I could say binder dot read bean with a new person. So essentially clearing it like that. And we could also do some small UX tweaks here, like for the add button, uh, we could add a click shortcut that's uh, enter. Uh, no, not eject, enter like that. So now uh, we, once we build this, I should be able to add uh, new people more effectively. So let's let's go, uh, take a look here. So see, test, test, test at test.com, hit enter, and sure enough, test two, test two, world.com, and there we go. All right, so there you have it. A, very straightforward way of building modern web apps 100% in Java. Vun is a battle-tested framework. It's been uh, around for years and years, and there are a lot of big companies building uh, big software with it. So if you haven't had a chance to try it out yourself yet, uh, go to either uh, Spring Initializer or to start.vun.com and create your own first project and just give it a go. Thanks for watching. Bye.